And truth be told, I haven't really been to school for graphic design. I did not take any course about it either. I just looked up YouTube and that's about it. I feel like I'm the most horrible person for saying this, but every time I scroll past social media, I do see a lot of graphics and I judge them. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Instead of, you know, complaining, even if I have my reservations and judgments, this is the exact reason why this video existed in the first place is because I want to somehow guide people on how to make a jaw-dropping social media graphic. But before we dive into that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank my friends at Post My Wall for sponsoring this video and logo reveal. So before we dive into it, there are three things that we will be talking about in this video in terms of design. And number one, that is color harmony. The second one is typography or font pairings. And the third one is composition. I feel like those top three things are like what makes or break a design. And like I said, I'm not an expert on this one, but this is what I have been using as a guide ever since then. It's always been colors, fonts, composition. It's always been in that route. And I feel Feel like it can definitely improve your social media graphics at least five times better let's go to colors first so in a lot of cases we are designers a lot of people who are, have been following me for a while have been designing their own stuff and doing social media graphics and whatnot and I know that you already have a brand Bible or a brand identity guide and in that guide there are at least three to six colors, which is your brand palette or color palette for your brand. And now what happens if you do not have that? So there are people that are just starting from scratch and they want to create something or at least create something for the client and that project does not have a brand palette yet. What I usually do is I go, <coughs> excuse me, what happened back there? <coughs> <laughs> so again, what I usually do is I go to coolers.co. This one is just shared to me by one of my students, Arda. He has shared this to us inside my community, Create and Rise Academy, and the link is actually in the description. Hey, shameless plug. And yeah, in terms of coolers.co, what I really like about this website is that it has a lot of options. And you can go to explore this tab right here. Just type in whatever color that you want to use as a dominant color say green and you can actually see all the color palettes that has green on them and then there are these hex codes that you can just copy to whatever creative tool you're using which i'll be sharing to you later so there's that another option is going to this generate tab for example and in generate tab you basically got the control of all the colors in the palette so say for example you like this and this but not this this and this and this so what you can do is just lock these two colors and then press spacebar so it will select a bunch of colors for you like this one I like this but I don't like this so I'll just continue pressing spacebar until I find the right color for me so I can lock that too and then this is it and then you can just export this I just usually use the image one and then test and then export it then you should be able to get this image right here with its hex codes so then you can start just putting these hex codes in the creative tool that you're using and that's basically it for colors or another website where you can find awesome palettes is color.adobe.com this is one of my favorites also this is like the original place where I am looking for colors Adobe color is the same so you can just type in a keyword say purple right there enter it and then all the color palettes on purple is going to come out so Adobe just uses six colors and not like coolers wherein they use more than six so in coolers you can see there in the explore tab they're using like more than six colors next one is font pairs so when it comes to font pairings I do not suggest that you use four fonts in one graphic so at the very least you can use two at the very most you can use 
two. <laughs> so I do not suggest using more than two fonts in one graphic because it's just going to be chaotic and then there are also instances wherein if you use more than two fonts, it feels like one of the fonts are not actually supposed to be there. It feels like it doesn't belong. So using two fonts one for the headline one for the paragraph is like the standard so when it comes to thinking about font pairs all you have to do is just google it just type font pairs on google and then you would be able to see images like this for example like oswald font and open sans font we also have anton font and damien font i think it's called so also this one, right? 20 free font pairings. So now we talked about color harmony and fonts. You think it's like a super big deal. It's so hard to do that, but there are actually guides all over the internet that can help you decipher the first two important factors when creating an awesome social, social media image, right? So now let's go to composition, which I'll be showing you myself. Today, we will be doing a Pinterest pin. You would be able to see templates here. By the way, I am using poster my wall. This one is an awesome creative tool. Should you have a lot of templates or you do not have any sort of like idea what to design, that kind of stuff, there's a poster my wall right there. I am just looking for a very simple Pinterest pin because then I'll be making the design from scratch and then I'll just be deleting it. So, you know, or I, you could probably start something from scratch here also if you want. So I'm just going to click this one, okay? Designed by Surly K. So I Another thing that is super awesome in terms of um, posting my wall is that when you make templates for their library and it's a paid template, you can actually make money from it. So we have been talking about making money online for like years and this is one of the ways to go also if you want to earn money from creating design templates then post on my wall is the best place to be, okay? Customize template. So in my case, ladies and gentlemen, I already have the what we call branding guidelines and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I already have my own branding guidelines but then again like I said before if you do not have it just go to coolers or adobe.com and you will be able to decipher what yours are. So I have violet, yellow, peach, and white. Those are my main four colors. I don't use more than four or sometimes I just darken this purple a little to complement this color and that's it. I have five colors right I'll be using these colors to create the Pinterest graphic and I want the Pinterest graphic to be easy and simple I don't want it to be crazy I want it to be neat I want the title to stand out more than the Pinterest graphic itself if you're going to look at pinterest.com for example a lot of the graphics there are all white and so if you're going to choose a background that's not white it's more likely to stand out Right, so I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So the Pinterest pins here are not even, you know, it doesn't have a lot of colors on them. It's usually white or pink or like pastel color. This is a place where a lot of females go to. And so, you know, it's usually white or gray or dirty white. Like I don't want my pins to be white because I love purple. Aside from that fact, you also want to stand out. Like for example, this pin right here, this pen is red, peach-ish, scarlet-ish background and it caught my eye right away because it's not like the rest wherein it's white, right? So that's also one thing that you need to consider when you are putting a background for a graphic. What's the dominant color that you will be choosing? Because if it's a Pinterest pin, you don't want it to be white because it's not going to stand out. Everyone else is using white, right? So those are like a few things that you want to consider. So before that, I will be deleting all of this because because again, uh, we will be starting from scratch. I want my background to be a solid color and I'm going to choose custom background color, right? So again, we'll go back to the branding kit. Like what I said earlier, if you don't have branding kits, just make sure you have a hex code to copy and then you paste it here. There you have it. So I want it to be like that. Can't stop using purple. So now I also want a photo on this one. Again, we will be uh, creating a Pinterest pin. So if you're if you don't remember what I'm doing, 
So we have here this one already. This is a photo that I added and I think if I'm not mistaken, it's from Unsplash. But they also have other options to choose from. You can add photos from Facebook, Google Drive, Dropbox, or the stock photos. So let's just say freelancing, for example. And apparently these guys are Filipinos. I feel like they are Filipinos. That's, that's really nice. Okay, so I'll go back from add my photos. Add photo here, and of course, as quirky as I am, I don't like the photos to just be straight, so I'm going to make it a little bit in a slanting position like that. Now, aside from photos, they also have nice elements here, and one of the things that you could do is add a shape. And you know, there are a bunch of shapes here, but I found out the one that I really like the most is brush strokes. So I love this scribble thing. And since pink is not in my brand, I'm going to go back to the branding kit and copy the hex code for yellow. Go back here and then color, paste. All right, so I guess I'm gonna make it a little smaller so that's not like let's see if there are effects here like shadows oh, there is i like shadows behind my photos uh, that one's better um losing the opacity a little all right there you have it and i think i'm gonna add more elements i'm gonna add more of these when in terms of composition, by the way, guys, it's a little bit hard to decipher which one is which. You know what I mean? Because it takes a while for you to be able to kind of like sense. At least for me, I don't have like a rule in my head when it comes to composition. I can't say exactly what, you know, fits. I can't say that, oh, the photo should be here because there is this thing that we call whatever theory and you have to follow it. Like I'm not really a by the book person when it comes to design. I really want to explore and, you know, just put colors here and there, try to see what looks good in my eyes and when I say what looks good quote unquote you actually develop that kind of feeling or that kind of familiarity when it comes to composition by always looking at other people's work and when you're a designer you want to go to Pinterest and see these graphic designs that are in there that are good hopefully and you study them like what makes it look good it's is it clever that this person put that photo here you know that kind of stuff you take some time to study these photos on pinterest for example or on instagram and decipher what looks good on them and then you continue designing social media stuff as well and then in that sense you will be able to develop that third eye when it comes to composition So I feel like I'm already contented with the design. That's the time that you will be adding in text. So I don't put the text first. I left some space for the text, but I don't add the text first because I wanted to make sure that the designs are already in place before I even put a text. I just feel like that's how you do it. I don't have a theory for that or whatsoever. <laughs> I'm just going to be using one font and then just differentiate it in terms of weights. So weights meaning how thick or how thin the design is, or the, the text is rather. I'm just going to type in the title of the pin and then make it a little bigger. When it comes to composition also, it's important to think about what are the things that you want them to see first, right? Especially when it comes to text. If you want them to see the text first, you want it to be larger. And then if you don't want them to see that first, then you make it smaller, you know, like this one. This is just, you know, an ad for my website. And then I don't want them to see that first. So I'm just going to put that in a smaller font. And then this one a little bit bolder. So I can say bold and make it even bigger. I'm going to add a couple more details before I leave. Okay, 
Okay, so I feel like this is it. It's super easy and simple and we might have a problem with negative space because there are a lot of spaces in here. So just be careful with the spaces like here on this one, there's like too much space, like it's too much breathing room and whatnot. But then again, you can do more stuff in it like enlarging this headline, for example. And again, when it comes to composition, it's familiarity. Just look into how other people are doing it and then later on, you will be able to get a sense of better composition. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to download this. Apart from just creating an image here on Post On My Wall, they also have an option wherein you can directly share on social media. So you just have to connect it, right? So post to Twitter or on Facebook, you can do that also. But what's even cooler is they have an email campaign option. If for example, you're an entrepreneur or you're a freelancer that is managing your emails for your clients, you can design your email campaign here on Post On My Wall and directly send it. You can just add an email subject, pre-header, link on design, text to content. So you can change your settings here by removing post to Marvel ad and edit social links and edit physical address. Just fill in the blanks and complete the form and it should be able to send you to your email list, right? So that's super awesome. Alrighty. So I hope that you have learned so much from this video and as a treat, I am sending you a 20% discount if you wish to purchase Post On My Wall. They have given us a special discount coupon code. So if you wish to do that, the code is DemiB20. Just enter that before you check out and then you will be getting a 20% discount on the premium plus plan of Post My Wall. So there you have it guys. Again, hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.